As for my son, oh, it's, it's been a stressful seven days, mate. How are you doing, son? <laughs> Thank you, Hammers, for giving me the ammunition to create that intro. Thank you, mate. Say no more, Dave. Say no more. Dave, by the way, do you, you know your slogan, innit? End the stream, bro. End the stream. <laughs> hey, bro, it's been a long seven days, man. I'm telling you, bro. We appreciate everyone tuning in, but unfortunately, you know, this is this is the most that you've got. you got to see our faces. Pay the rent. Bro, uh... this is people. This is people. I didn't know you were one of those those oh oh you're the only team that happened to merchants, bro. I I, I expected better from you. I expected nah, better. No, bro. From you. Nah, you guys are the perpetual victims, man. You guys are like like the feminists of football, bruv. Liverpool. Mm, yeah. Yeah, using the left downs of football in it. I'm <laughs> getting getting pam, bro. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I feel like are, are you man right over right it now? Because you know what it is? Are you man over it now? Because you lot actually played really well. And there's a lot of positives to take away from that game. And all I heard was Liverpool fans crying. If I was a Liverpool fan, I would have been pissed. But I'd have said, you know what? We actually look like title contenders, you know? Like I saw I saw a fight from the team. Down to nine men still tried to win the game. Saw a lot of character. And instead, man, were complaining about the referees. The referees are going to be crap every single game of the season. We know this already, blood. You man need to focus on the positives, bro. Yes. Now this is where this is where it gets funny. So just because all of your teams decided to not do nothing about all the bad decisions that's ever meant to you, that's like saying, okay, I mm. bend over in the shower. Now you've got to come and bend over in the shower with me. Now I sit mm. there and say I disagree with this fundamental premise. I prefer the option of going to the officer, exercising my free speech and saying, officer, by the way, they're getting bummed in the shower. I don't want to join them. So you guys can keep on being little bitches and you can go out there and do this, that and the other. Oh my goodness. Let me watch my language as well, by the way. I know Dave will get on me for that. Mm. Um, they, but, but what I'm saying is, is that I think that I don't need to agree with this. I don't need to align with that mentality at all. I, I just simply, if we want to make a statement because we feel like we've got a leg to stand on, if anything, I think you guys should be saying you're welcome. I think now we've opened more of a door for more teams to go out there and get more answers on this stuff. If they want to, if you don't want to, that's fine. Um, but in terms of the performance, you're right, it was a fine performance. And we was happy about it, but both things can be true. We can happy, we can be happy about the performance, which was the general consensus. And then we can also be very fuming about the referee and decisions, irregardless if Guy Nacho's goal should have counted against Arsenal. Irregardless, we're allowed to make that claim. Um, I get that, but my thing is, yeah, like... They're not going to change anything in it. They're not going to. You know that's what I'm not saying? what we were hoping for, though. And I know that's not what you were hoping for, but you were not the first team to complain about VAR. You're not mm -hmm. the bro. They've even released um, the audio. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? And there's there's no real remorse because they're going to keep doing what they're going to do because whether we like it or not, as football fans, yeah, VAR was clearly put in not for footballing reasons. They clearly put that in there because they thought, you know what, this will be a bit more entertaining. Like, that's what they did it. They didn't do it for the fans. They did it for themselves, innit? The same reason yeah. why loads of other things won't change. The same reason why they decided to add 20 minutes of added time after every single football match. No manager was asking for that. No player was mm. asking for that. They were asking for more time off. And instead, they've made every football match 10 minutes longer. They don't care about the fans and they don't care about the people playing the sport. So, like getting hung up on something that they're not going to change to me don't make sense i'll just be like you know what we played well like what a way to go out if you're going to lose lose like that in it fact but again this is why we've got to analyze both things can be true we can look at it that way which the manager the fans and everyone was thinking that way but i just think at the same time these are you know listen one thing i like understanding of is if mm. it's a human error i'd like to know if it's a human error maybe we just got terrible referees if it's a little bit fishy and maybe could even imply corruption where there's money there's corruption and this is the mm. richest league in the world and i definitely wouldn't think it's out of the realms of possibility for corruptions to happen now i don't think that mm. that's a liverpool thing i don't think the premier league for the last 10 years have been trying to make liverpool lose everything i think that mm. is just a narrative thing it could be anything it, it, we can broad the ideas of what it could be whether it's city paying the refs whether it's levy paying the rest whether it's friggin someone made a bet someone who's a big deal made a bet that isn't involved with football i don't know bro but when you listen to that var recording how quick the var referee was to actually disallow what was an objective view bro this is why everybody was fuming the curtis jones thing people was fuming we obviously made an appeal to try and get that overturned it didn't but the thing that we made the most ripe about is it was the objective decision 
Because red cards and stuff, they're subjective. The objective decision was that that was an onside goal and it was cleared straight away. Nah, we're fine from that VAR official. And he was there going, whoa, 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 whoa. He sounds like a kid with Tourette. No, but what it sounded like, yeah, was he said we were fine almost as if he assumed that the goal was given. But it wasn't. So it's almost like he wasn't watching the game and he didn't know what was going on, which is strange because he's got the videotape. Mm. You know what I mean? So I... I don't understand, innit? And also, no, from my understanding, the Lino gave yeah. offside as well, didn't he? Yeah. So if the Lino gave offside, he saw the Lino raise his flag. So why yeah. would he assume that the goal was given? That's the only thing I don't understand. But, th but this is why it can't just be human error, bro. There's no way a guy can be that dumb. There's no way. Like, bro, I understand a guy can be that dumb. Those guys in that room was no better than Tony and Peter in the pub on a Tuesday drinking Fosters. They were no mm. better. You're telling me that sounded different than an altercation in a pub? You're telling me that sounded any different? People were doing card lobby friggin' videos on Twitter and stuff like that, bro. Come on, come on. Like, if people are naive enough to believe that something doesn't happen, and I'm saying it, it's probably gone in favour of Liverpool at times, probably mm. gone in favour of United at times and other teams and whatnot, and then it's probably gone against us as well. Why? And I agree with you. I don't know if this is what you was implying, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but VAR, I think it's an additional tool where you can at least impact the narrative a little bit more. I don't think it's a thing Facts. where... You where the players prior to the game are agreeing to an outcome of the game. No, but I do think, because football, you'll know this, Rance, football is finite. There's great footballers who never made it, but there's always that extra percent. There's always that extra bit of luck. That, you know, many yeah, factors and variables. You'll see professional footballers who aren't much better than some guy who used to play Sunday League. No the, reason be, the reason being is because that's how fine lines it is. So think about if you can get a man to influence decisions in games and how much of an impact that's actually going to make. You can be the best team in the Premier League, but you might not be the, the team who's going to beat everyone 4 or 5 no? Yeah, but, but come on, think we're... about it. We're seeing right now that Barcelona are oh, under exactly. investigation for, for spending upwards of 7 million yeah, on influencing referees. And you don't think that VAR was brought in for that reason. Yeah. Like, let's be real. Like, people can talk about conspiracies and all that, yeah. But, bro, VAR just gives the officials more leverage, more power, and more, abil more abilities to influence the outcome of games bro yep. that's what it does you know what yep. i mean like let's let's not pretend it really well, Rand, does give them that just for the people watching i'm going to ask you because you know the answer to this but for the people watching why are they doing that because people are going well why would they do that to liverpool or why would they want to make the premier league that way because of money because the outcome is important because mm -hmm. that can be what is financially profitable if it's a big talking point and that's what i mean and that's all it was it was a big talking point and stuff like this and, and i don't know the things behind the game I don't know if it was corrupt, how it was corrupt, but there's definitely evidence to suggest that was more than human error from all yeah. of them at once. You're telling me there's five dudes who were incompetent enough, but guess the only dude that, you know, you, you've you listened to the audio, innit? Do you mm -hmm. know the, the, the replay guy who was saying, oh, by the way, actually, I think, are you, are you sure you're all right with that decision? Like, because it yeah. was on side the angle that we sent you. That was a trainee. So you're saying that, that he weren't in, he weren't in on it. And <laughs> they were like, yo, yo. And they were like, no, 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 it's good. The only one who tried to actually back us was that dude. And then the, the actual officials just dismissed it straight away. The person on the pitch said it was offside. All the officials in the background said it was offside. So we've got a bit of a problem when a friggin' a guy was there doing his work experience, letting these guys know, by the way, you've made it like an astronomical error here. And, mm. and, and that's why even like, because I've got like three or four decisions in that game that I'm very questionable questionable uh, questionable about and it happened in the space of 60 minutes so i'm sitting there thinking how has this happened so people can sit there and say you're being a victim or people can sit there and say you're this or the statement was pointless i disagree i think it's actually really good that we've listened to how stupid those referees are i think mm. it's very important and i encourage i don't know what it's what the solution is but i think if you get those more often more answers more often it at least limits the potential outcome of them being able to control that narrative even yeah but more. yeah but yeah but here's the like thing though because things. before referees used to do like they used to do press conferences when there was bad decisions they used to come out after the game and they used to get interviewed <clears throat> yeah they need to bring those back do you know what i'm saying yeah. like if you're going to give the referees even more power to change games because var does do that then they need more responsibility with power comes responsibility these guys need to come out and they need to justify it big decisions after the game because then at least if they justify it there's less talking points but then again on the flip side look at sky sports bro like it's been four days and 
they'll still be talking about it now because it's content yep. for them. The same way they've got shows right now and they just focus on on stats and all these other things. Like they like all these numbers and they like inconclusive things because it gives them stuff to make. It gives them stuff to talk about. It gives them a story in it. So yep. for real, these men are doing these things for entertainment, pure entertainment. It's not about the game no more. Yep. It's not about the game no more. It's about, about the it. product. That's what it's about. It's not about the actual game. So it's like that in the UFC, isn't it? It's like yeah. that in the UFC. You know who will sell the most tickets? A poll, like yeah, for instance, mm. Sean O'Malley. It's not about who's the fight. best fighters. Exactly. Sean O'Malley's going to fight Marlon Vera. Marlon Chito Vera got battered in his last fight, 40, uh, 50 45, lost every single round to Corey Sanhagen. He'll be fighting for the belt next because three years ago, he beat Sean O'Malley like, like by a leg kick. That was dodgy. Like, That's it. it. So they're creating a story, creating a rivalry when really they know it's a mismatch. Exactly, bro. It's exactly. just money. Like, it's, 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 the, it's the story, isn't it? Yeah, storylines are important. That's why I'm confused, bro. And and here's the thing, like, shout out to Lee as well. Lee's our guy. I was on a show with him, Saeed, LB, and all those the other day. And the mm. naivety of them to suggest that there was no implication of possible corruption, not just in our game, but other games. Because they were thinking oh, that was... They were making straw man arguments, bro. They're arguing with people that don't exist or they're arguing with Twitter profiles. They had the creme de la creme of Liverpool fans on their show and yet they're arguing with people who don't exist. And, bro, they were simply sitting there saying, well, James, I think it's a bit too far and I think you'll lose credibility when you bring up that idea. Well, I think it's significantly more probable because this is what we've got to do. You can't 100% prove anything. You can't no. 100% prove that your mum loves you. But based on evidence, all the things yeah. that you might have done, based you on actions, you you know what I mean. You can come to there a good go. enough kind of um yeah. You can come enough to a good enough kind of um thought process to behind that, it. That's it, brother. That's it. So the point is, you can't one hundred percent prove anything. And Lee was asking things of me that I never asked for. He was like, "Well, how are you going to get one hundred percent of the decisions right?" I don't expect the referees to get one hundred percent of the decisions right, but I don't think with the additional tools that they've been given, such as VAR, which was supposed to remove human error, we should still be getting human error decisions. That's got to be shined a light upon. And the reason why these things are happening is because there's no accountability. Rans, I remember when I was younger, I went and grabbed a chocolate cake. I ate the chocolate cake and my mum saw me eating a chocolate cake that I shouldn't have been eating. What does Mama Redmond do? She backhands me in my face. And by the way, I was not apologetic when my hunger sensors took over for me to eat that cake, but I was most certainly apologetic when my mum backhands hands of my face it really hurt and i said by the way mum i'm sorry and guess what i never went and ate a cake before tea again now why was i sorry i was not sorry for what i did i was sorry that i got caught if yeah, you don't 100%. get caught you're not going to be sorry it is very simple premise that's why these Correct. referees do need to be held accountable because then at least they realize the scrutiny they realize the pressure and they realize the stakes of making stupid decisions because bro it's also about um uh, accuracy over efficiency so these mm. guys are they're just trying to get everything done quick they're trying to adhere to the short attention spans of the modern day fan and they're thinking let's just get this over and done with opposed to realizing what was an objective decision in the end so people can say i'm crying but i hate all you's crying saying oh by the way it, 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 we've had this happen to us and this happened to us. okay then how about we stop getting bent over in those terms pause and let's actually make a stance against these referees and try and make them be more accountable. I think that's a very simple thing to ask for. Um, and that's what I was trying to clarify on the show the other day. No, I that... think that's spot on. I think I completely agree that um, these guys need to be held accountable for their actions. I also agree that them bringing this in here yeah, was not to benefit the game of football. Do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because like I always said, I, it's, it's the same an analogy with the guns in America. They say, oh, guns don't kill people, people kill people. But if there's no guns, then no one gets shot. Do you know what I'm saying? And when you look at VAR, it's like, what's the point of it? You're bringing in VAR. VAR was supposed to take away the human error and make give us conclusive outcomes. It's not doing that. So it's causing more problems. Like it's taken away the ability to celebrate a goal now because now you've got half an eye on waiting for the VAR check. So yep. players aren't celebrating goals anymore. Like the same emotion. Mm -hmm. Like I don't feel the same emotion when a goal goes in anymore because a part yep. of me is waiting to see if it's going to stand. The amount of times mm -hmm. on my watch along, I've changed the score and had to change it back. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you just don't know what's going on. You can't honestly celebrate the game the same way. You can't enjoy the game the same way. Like it's had a lot mm. more negatives on the game than positives. For every one decision that VAR gives you, yeah, that maybe the ref got wrong and VAR has overturned it. There's way more that goes the other way. Mm -hmm. There's way more that goes the other way. And it's like, if there's still going to be human error, 
then what is the point of it? Like, it doesn't make no yeah. sense. We're better off just leaving it to the linesman and the referee 